What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because I'm doing a deck profile of a deck that we all love here on the channel and that is Hero. But it's not just any hero build, it's specifically more focused towards the elemental hero side of things. Yes, you're still playing the vision heroes and the destiny heroes, but the elemental heroes are the core of this deck. Now just before I explain in a little bit more depth, I want you guys to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already because we're almost at 7,000 subscribers and I need you guys to hit that subscribe button it's literally free and then we'll get to 7,000. We upload five days a week here on Spanko. Who else do you know is uploading five days a week? Well, maybe Ruxin, I guess, and Team Sam, but I'm doing it too. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, but I'm gonna give you guys a quick little explanation before we get into the video. And then essentially what I wanna talk about is the fact that this deck, I feel like actually doesn't need to be built differently. A lot of hero players try to find different ways to build the deck to optimize it. Whereas I actually think the deck is already built really optimally, but it's the play style that needs to change. So I'm gonna get a little bit more in detail in the video, but I hope you guys enjoy. And with that, let's get into the deck profile. So this is it, the new era of the hero deck profile. This deck is going to look kind of standard in a lot of ways, but there's also some other things that are a little bit different. On top of that, the most important thing about this deck now is you just have to play it differently. It's not like your typical standard hero where you're just going to combo off and you're going to lose to Nibiru. You're like where the hero boards, the best ones are just Nibiru token pass. You, you never want that to happen. And honestly, in a format like today's format where Nibiru is relevant, you have hand traps that are relevant. You have DD Crow that is relevant. There are just so many different cards that are just going to straight up blow you out. And you do not want that to happen. A card like Super Poly is still at three. Do you really want to lose your DPE and Dark Lock to a Super Poly? No. So for that reason, you do want to change up how this deck is played. And this is the perfect list to do so. So I'm going to go through the deck profile here real quick because it's a very standard hero profile for the most part. However, I am later on in the video going to talk a little bit more in depth about the new play style of hero. So we're starting off here with triple Stratos. You know how every deck has a Stratos? Like they have a card that people call a Stratos. Well, this is the Stratos of Stratos is. We have triple Shadow Mist. Shadow Mist at three is very important in this build. We're playing one solid soldier, one liquid soldier, one honest Neos, and three cross keeper. Now, why are we playing three cross keeper? I'll explain that in a little bit, but it does get your shadow mist out of your hand, which is really powerful because then you can get to your mass change. On top of that, you guys can see this is more of an elemental hero heavy build. And the reason for that is because you can now incorporate more search cards in the deck, more cards to deck thin, and just cards to just bait out hand traps your opponent might have. So with that being said, that's the elemental hero lineup plus the cross keepers, which is an honorary elemental hero. And then we're playing the typical Vision Hero package. We're playing three Vision Hero Ferris, two Vision Hero Vion, and one Increase. The really cool thing about playing one Increase in this build is that you're playing 45, so it's actually a lot less likely to draw the one Increase. You could be playing two, but I just wanted to keep it at 45. I didn't want to play 46, so that's why I'm playing just the one, but I think the one is just all you need. Then we're playing a small Destiny Hero package, two Malicious, one Denier, as well as one Celestial. We're not playing Dasher, you don't need it in this deck. Malicious is going to be your Destiny Hero for your DPE, so this is all you need, but I do still Still like playing the celestial especially in the mid to late game getting a free draw too is never a bad thing and that's it for your monsters this is your monster count you're not playing hand traps the reason for that is you really do want to go first with this deck you want to focus on going first but the thing is keep in mind you're still playing hero so if you are forced to go second even without any hand traps you have access to a lot of powerful cards that can help you break boards and otk your opponent so even without hand traps you can still go second in this deck however you really want to focus on going first and being able to make some unbreakable boards which honestly are not that big you're going to see these boards. They're not going to be like three, four monster boards. You can honestly sit on a dark law with a rivalry and potentially like a super poly set. And that's all you really need. So for that reason, we're keeping it very nice and concise. We don't need any other cards that are going to hinder our consistency. We are just playing the most consistent build as we possibly can. So we're playing then one polymerization, one miracle fusion, both one ofs because they're searchable in the deck. And then we're playing three super polymerization. You have to be playing three super poly in today's format. It just good against every single deck. It breaks boards going second going first you can set it and just sit on it it helps as another form of disruption so you do want to be playing triple super poly then we're playing two fusion destiny of course this card is insanely powerful gets you to dpe but a lot of the time you don't even need to go into your dpe turn one if you're ending on a dark law because you don't want to lose to something like a super poly or something like a lava golem which are very prevalent in today's format so that's it for the fusion cards and then we are playing 
three a hero lives three e emergency call yes we're playing three e call so a lot of hero decks don't play this at all maybe they'll play one for the stratos but a lot of them just cut this card completely but in this build i really like playing the three the reason for that is because you're playing such a high elemental hero count in the names but on top of that the really cool thing about playing e emergency call is if you have crosskeeper in hand you can e call your shadow mist and get a free shadow mist on the board which then means you're going to get to a free mass change so it's going to almost guarantee you the mass change a lot more often with e call because even if you have the shadow mist already in hand then you can just search the solid soldier activate your e call search your shadow mist normal summon solid soldiers solid to special your shadow mist and boom now you have ma access to mass change so it's really important because you guys are going to see the whole point of this deck is really to get to dark law as fast as possible because in today's format dark law is really just the best floodgate monster in the game it really is and i'm not even exaggerating that because honestly if you think about a tier limit board a lot of people complain about oh like he activated shifter i can't really do anything now it's like okay if i have dark law on the board tier limit players are not really playing a lot of cards like impermanence and whatnot in the main deck anyways so how are they really going to be stopping a uh, dark law right so sometimes you can just end on a single dark law and that's good enough so then of course like i said we are playing the three e-call but we're also playing the one rota of course rota is just a generic searcher it also searches your cross keeper keep that in mind which is really important so rota is really important three mass change mass change of course is the most important card to this deck and then we're playing three allure of darkness now this is the main reason for the 45 cards in the deck i know this is going to be very not standard this is something a lot of people don't play i actually tested this deck so much and i even actually tested it on stream so if you guys want to check me out on stream check it out link is in the description but i do want to talk about it because there was actually a point where i was playing product prosperity in this deck because i was like man the only thing with hero is yes it's a consistent deck but sometimes you just need that one card to make your boards unbreakable so what i mean by that is imagine you're playing hero and you end on your dark law board right and let's say you have a dark law and then you're like oh but you know dark law plus rivalry would just be the game winning play like you know my opponent would never be able to play around that or dark law plus super poly would be more than enough to win a game but sometimes you can get access to your dark law but cards like super poly cards like rivalry which you guys are going to see we play three of here of course these are not searchable cards so how do we get to these cards and that's what the allure of darkness is for tried pot of prosperity out as well prosperity was pretty good for me the only thing that i noticed about prosperity is it kills your extra deck too fast and the thing is with this extra deck you really need the versatility in it so you don't want to lose a lot of your cards to prosperity i hate to say it because i did try it and i thought it was a really good idea but i think allure of darkness after a while of testing i think this is the way to go think about it all of your hero cards here well most of them not all of them but a lot of them are dark monsters right sometimes you have the extra ferruses in deck that you're not really going to be using you can use allure of darkness on these you can lose allure of darkness on extra cost keepers in your hand that's why we're playing three honestly we're playing four destiny hero monsters because of the allure if i have a destiny hero celestial in my hand let's just say i draw it I can allure it away no problem it's not a big deal so that's the really cool thing about this deck is it's already consistent in the monster count in the hero count but you really want to get to the non-hero cards the non-searchable cards which are all of your super polys your fusion destinies your rivalries because everything else in the deck you can get to you're always going to be getting to and that was never the issue with the deck the issue with the deck was always getting to the cards that aren't searchable so that's why super poly and rivalry of course like I said we play three of those are some of the best cards in the game right now and allure darkness just makes it a lot easier to get there so that's it for the main deck. It's a 45 card main deck. Now, just before we get into the extra deck, I do want to talk a little bit about the play style because that's what I was kind of talking about earlier, right? Like it's not that the hero deck itself has changed. It's I think the play style needs to change, right? And I've put in so many hours into this deck against so many different decks. And I really just thought that, hey, there is something that this deck really needs. And I realized what it needed wasn't a change in how it's built, but a change in how it's played. And this also comes from me watching a lot of hero players at my locals, at regionals and stuff like that, because what I ended up knowing noticing was a lot of hero players just wanted to spit out their hand they just wanted to put everything on the board you're gonna go you know activate ferris dump mali the summon ferris you know the, the whole vision hero play cross crusader summon mali blah 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 and i'm like okay so you're gonna get hit with a nib halfway through and your combo's over really right and you don't want that to happen now let's say your opponent doesn't have nib let's say you end on cross crusader dpe dark law okay they go super poly every deck is playing three super poly like think about tier limits it's a fusion based deck it's gonna be playing three super poly even a lot of sprite decks now are playing super poly dark ruler in the deck why would i go through all these combos all these plays put everything that i have in my hand on the board just to lose to a single card that's not the way i think you should be playing hero anymore and the reason i'm playing cards like allure here is because that kind of supplements the way i think hero needs to be played in today's format so i was testing a lot against tier limits and i really wanted to see if dark law was enough so in my testing i noticed if I could end on boards with just a Dark Law and then sit on a Super Poly or just a Dark Law and then sit on a Rivalry 
Sometimes I'd have a Dark Law and sit on a Mass Change as well, because if they have any sort of out for your Dark Law, let's say they have the Dark Ruler, you can Mass Change your Dark Law into a second Dark Law. So that's the thing, right? Like if you just end on a card or a way to stick that Dark Law on the board, that's all you really need. And then you're going to be ending on Shadow Mist on your board a lot of the time. So when you Mass Change on your opponent's turn, you're going to be able to search your Honest Neos. And if you're searching your Honest Neos, you also know that Dark Law is not going to be attacked over, which is really, really important. Important, right it's something that you should consider so what i really noticed was with this deck if you can just stick dark law out turn one survive a single turn your turn three go off king like turn three go your fairest place your all those like combo plays to get dpe out to get all those things out because then you can otk your opponent but the thing is the deck's never really had an issue otking your opponent the deck has really had an issue stopping your opponent from doing anything and i think in today's format that's exactly what dark law does for you so that's kind of just what i wanted to talk about how i think the play style of the deck needs to be different because even if you open your hand and you see full combo stratos plus Mali and you can search your Ferris and you open Fusion Destiny and you like you don't need to do that even though yes you have it yes you can do all that the stuff but why would you you just lose to a single card at that point and that's really not what you want to be doing if you're going to be a competitive deck right and you can argue oh but Spanko you're going to lose to a single card but that means your opponent also has to have that one card right they have to sack you well it's not really sacky because if every deck is playing three Super Poly three Dark Ruler that's six cards in their deck that they can just draw on their opening hand especially if they're going second they're going to have six cards in their hand so that means they're going to have a higher chance of drawing these cards right and then your combo is over your board it doesn't matter what your board is because you're gonna lose anyway right so that's just something i wanted to bring up i think the play style of the deck is what needs to change not so much the deck itself so with that being said i know i ranted on for a while but let's get into the extra deck here we're playing two dark law of course one anki i decided to play the one anki because it was a cool target with the mass change the other card that i'm going to be talking about is a square though honestly i don't even know if i'm saying the name right but i'll talk about this in a second but we're just playing the one anki we're playing the one blast so you can dodge like you know ash and whatnot for your stratos you're playing the one diane as well because you're playing the solid soldier who makes it so that solid soldier dodges imprim and whatnot so you can get your shadow miss always on the board and then you're playing the one acid of course with the absolute zero we all know how this combo works one sunrise one dpe like this is just standard hero stuff in the extra deck and then of course we're playing good super poly targets we're playing the starving venom the mud dragon as well as the guru these are the three that you need to be playing if you're playing super poly this essentially guarantees that you're going to break every single board with super poly so you need to be playing these three and then you're playing the one cross crusader the one wonder driver as well as the one dread decimator now, this is what I wanted to talk about. Dread Decimator is probably the one you can cut, but you can also potentially cut the Anki because Esquerdo is a thing. Esquerado, Esquer, whatever, this one, okay? I don't know how to say the name, but this one is a thing. Now, this one's really cool because it is a super poly target as well because all you need is an elemental hero monster, which is pretty much like half of your deck, and then any dark monster. So you can use one of your opponent's dark monsters to make this card, so it's really good. It also becomes a big body for you because it gains 100 attack for each elemental hero monster in your graveyard, which means that if you have your stratos you have your shadow miss in your graveyard he's gonna become a big body right so that's a really cool thing about him he's just another super poly target for you so if you wanted to you could play this over something like an anki or you can play this over something like a dread decimator it's really up to you dread decimator kind of has the same effect about the attack gain with this card that's kind of why i'm not playing this card i just thought a link monster would be better than a fusion monster but the other synergy with this card specifically is because it's an elemental hero in its name unlike anki which is a masked hero it being an elemental hero means that if you do summon it then you get to use a crosskeeper effect to essentially draw two cards and then put one card from your hand uh, to the bottom of the deck so it kind of fixes your hand so that's the only synergy that i would see playing this over playing the anki that's really up to you something that i've been testing back and forth and i don't know exactly which one i want to go with just yet but i just wanted to give you guys that option as well so that's it for the deck i hope i explained it to you guys well i know i ranted a little bit but i hope it makes a little bit of sense because I have been testing this for so long. I've been really dedicated to making this deck good and making this deck viable. And I think it's not the deck itself. I think it's the way we play the deck. So I hope you guys try this out for yourselves and let me know what you think. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. I hope you guys took what I said and maybe just, you know, formulated your own thoughts and opinions on it because I really feel that the biggest issue with Elemental Hero or Hero in general right now is that we just try to do everything we possibly can with our hand instead of manage the resources properly maybe that's just me but i've just done a ton of testing and from my experience i think this is the new way to play hero and it may just lead to a lot more success with this deck now if you guys did enjoy the video make sure to subscribe to the channel and like the video because we're almost at 7,000. I can feel it. I can I can taste it. We're almost at 7,000 and I wouldn't be here without you guys. I love the Spanko squad. Thank you guys all for being here. I appreciate every single one of you. With that, Spanko signing out. Peace.